welcome to Finding Unity. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, Lurleen. How are you this morning? Good. Did you sleep well? I did. Yeah, I had a good night's sleep. Thank God for you. Very good night's sleep. Did you have a good night? I did. I did have a good night's sleep. And I had a good night. I had a fun night. Oh, you had a fun night? Yeah. <laughs> Just laughing. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's a beautiful day this morning to yeah. have another blessing. Yeah. We woke up among the living, you're still standing. <laughs> oh, I woke up with my dog standing on my bed waiting for me to wake up. <laughs> she woke me up today. <laughs> oh, okay. You was too late this morning, huh? <laughs> yeah, for sure. It, I always, I had this other dog too, her name was Chavez, and I feel like she would wake me up with such vigor. And this is when I lived in Mexico. She would just wake me up and then I would just, I would stumble out of my room out to the front door and open the front door and she would run out and it was like every morning she would go, isn't it a day? Look, the sun, it's coming up again, again. Look at that. I could swear in her eyes that is what she was saying to me every morning. And I would just go, yes, Javis. <laughs> Oh, but she knew. She knew. Yes, it was time. She would like. She probably liked to go out early morning and, and look around at the beauty. You know. She sure did. She oh, really yes. did. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I have a little scripture to read this morning for, for us, and before Lovely. we get started. Yeah. Okay, she said, "Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land." Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that had made us, not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Entered into his gate with thanksgiving, and unto his court with praise. To be thankful unto him, and bless his name. The Lord is good, his mercy endures forever to all generations. And then I want to let you today that we can walk in the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Hmm. Fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. That's the fruits of the Spirit. Fruits yes, this the is the spirit. fruits of the Spirit. Those are the things we should be trying to consume <laughs> on I a try. daily basis. <laughs> I, I, I read it every morning. I said I'm going to share it with you, know, with, with you this morning, the fruits of the Spirit. Okay, let's read those fruits of the Spirit again so we review for ourselves. Okay, the fruits of the Spirit is love, mm -hmm. joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Yeah. And self-control. You know what? <laughs> you know what? That's a tough you one. Know, you know what? Self-control. They got a slice of watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> a slice of watermelon by self-control, and love and joy is an apple. Uh, <laughs> are these your words, Arlene? Are they? <laughs> yeah. I like that. Fruits of the Spirit is the grapes, a bunch of big, beautiful grapes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Delicious, Love and juicy. Joy. Apple. Available. Yeah. Yeah. So self-control yeah. is not a donut, then. It's a slice of watermelon. Nothing. This is the fruits. It is anything about eating food. <laughs> Said the fruits of the spirit. <laughs> Just checking. 
It did say the taste of a donut. Yep. You know I'm going to push it. Are you sure it doesn't say donut in there somewhere? No. Donut. No. Donut. Okay. It says fruit. Great. Got it. You apple. Green apple. Red apple. And then you self-control. You just get a little slice of my watermelon and sit out and enjoy it and control yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, that a watermelon. Makes, that mm. makes you happy. <laughs> right. Well, a watermelon on a really hot day, especially at the beach, is a really amazing and refreshing. He's amazing. He's yeah. just good. On, yeah, on a hot day, he's so refreshing. Mm -hmm. Did you know that a watermelon, because we use, we use watermelon in Chinese medicine as an herb, a watermelon is a, a slightly a diuretic. And it removes heat out of the body. So when you're overheated or you're going, you know, feeling like heat stroke coming on, like you're feeling chills out in that heat, then a watermelon is something that can help pull the, the heat out of your body. Isn't, mm. it, isn't that neat? That's why. That is really neat. Yeah, so it's very natural wow. for people. So when we were talking about cravings before, listen to your body. I mean, when it's saying we need donuts, I don't know that that's your body talking. But. <laughs> When you're I in a think that's, I think donuts is the mind. <laughs> you're right, exactly. I think that's yeah, might be your will. So you've noticed that people bring it to the beach, or they bring it to the barbecue, or you know, in the summertime, and uh -huh. naturally, it's a it was a it's a natural inclination for people to do that, and they don't realize why, but it's just, but they know that it's refreshing. Yeah, and you know, Add some like mint. summer, summertime, you know, most everybody. Know about watermelon? You go in the home and they have watermelon. Yeah. You know we have watermelon year round, but summertime, especially for my our, our family, we have watermelon in our refrigerator yeah. both all the time during the summer. And now that's just because, like I go back home, we was raised on a farm in the country, and that's where we had watermelon. Mm -hmm. Summertime, they, the watermelons come in, start coming in right about May, June, mm -hmm. uh, July, August, September. They would end. That's when they're ripe. They ripen. They start ripening. Uh, they start they're getting kind of ripening in May, but they're not ripening up in June, July, August, September. They mm -hmm. is beautiful. They fully ripen in September. They kind of waste away. They they go, the vines go to go and dry, and the watermelons be quick growing, and and the watermelon patch get empty because there's nothing else left. Cause we would always pick them all before they, when, before they um, before the little cold weather come, it just you know it just start to getting cool, and they and the watermelons are quick growing. Then the vines are dry up. Right. Mm -hmm. We also learned that I mean, just as being an herbalist. And anybody who studied herbs know this is that wherever you have something that would be a malady like a poison oak or poison ivy growing yeah. in nature, uh -huh. its remedy grows next to it. Isn't that interesting? Oh, oh I never heard know that. Yeah. So down where we lived, we had poison wood. Were you? Are you familiar with poison wood? I know you don't like walking around in the woods, so you would. No, I don't. <laughs> I would, I would never learn because I'm not doing it. <laughs> I, I, so, you know, I was, I never was the one wandering around in the woods when mm -hmm. I was home. But my suits and brother and I, they would go out and had pathways. And when I walk with them in the pathway, I'm walking between two brothers and sisters because I'm not by myself. <laughs> I can't stand it. It's just so scary. <laughs> I was watch I was watching on TV a commercial about Hawaii and I thought of you. <laughs> you remember that time you were walk hiking in Hawaii and kept looking at your feet and the guide was like, Why do you keep looking at your feet? <laughs> yes. I was looking He took up on a hike. He saw I was acting the crazy I think. I, I told him I was afraid. He said, he said, let me tell you something. He said, there's no no animals, no snakes, no nothing in Hawaii. 
nothing. He said, nothing here to bite you. He said, just enjoy yourself. <laughs> I said, take it a ride. <laughs> Find a place to walk. Walk over here. Walk over. I guess this guy said, he was out of I am a team leader. He said, let me get over here with this woman and just let her know to just go to walk and stop all this foolishness. <laughs> I didn't know that I didn't know that about Hawaii. I mean I learned that from you. Yeah, he said that. He told he says no creatures in here that can harm you. That's he said a- we don't have them kind of animals here. He said we don't have them. <laughs> and he said you in a free country from creatures. <laughs> he said nothing here is gonna bite or harm you. <laughs> told me no so I had to get it together <laughs> <laughs> and down where we were where we're like iguanas the size of Cadillacs and, yeah. and and pythons that can eat deer and alligators uh, and crocodiles like we are we come from the land of critter for sure yeah but yeah. then you know they said that they they used to didn't have have them here now they done find two little alligators out there. There they saw this big old python going across the street <laughs> just before you get to the park. They said he was crossed and said he was almost long as his cross way. That's all you need. My Pilates teacher and her husband were taking a walk there. She said she looked <laughs> he was cross. <laughs> she stopped and she couldn't even move. <laughs> Don't move. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, what was so strange? She had walked that Saturday and said, she said to him, says, what you would do if we see a snake? I said, he's like, you know no snakes around here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's the first <laughs> thing that's going to happen. Said, he said, i kill him. So, uh-huh. And she said, the next morning, <laughs> <laughs> they was walking and said, down to pier, come this pier go across this big old looks look like a python. She said he was the biggest snake, mm. and he was crawling slow and said, "Steve, don't move, don't move." I said, "I thought you go kill it." <laughs> <laughs> in theory, in theory, I was gonna kill him. Really. He didn't want him to move. Too much. Said, don't move. Let him go. You know, so she, she, so they just standing at nothing in their hand. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. You can't. You can't kill. It. You couldn't run that thing over five times and kill it. Like you and couldn't kill it. Saying. Yeah. She no. You can't was kill the them. Biggest one. She said that's the biggest one. No, they will eat your huge. animal. Like they will. Took his time crossing, just going slow. Yeah, that's around. a confident animal. You think that, that animal can be killed moving like that? <laughs> the one thing you know is that that animal is going to stand the test of time. And it's not going to be, not afraid of you either. Nope, not at all. But she said, I kind of want to back it up. I want to just, I know Steve would have been in a mess because Bernie that could have outrun him. <laughs> Right, you don't have to be the fastest one. You just need to be faster than the slowest one. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it is your husband. <laughs> well, I think, I think she left him behind. Yep. <laughs> he could take care of himself. Well, he said he was going to kill if he did yeah. one. I'll leave you to it, honey. Gonna... Yeah, he said he was going to kill him, so she's going to leave him back there to kill the snake. She's gone. Yeah, he's the hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Yeah. Well, anyways, what I, was, what, well, what I was saying was, down there, should you take a walk in the woods, I know you won't. Now you won't even leave your, your house, but <laughs> just going into civil society. But down there in the in the mangroves in the woods, there's poison wood, which is native to the the area. And then next to it grows the gumbo limbo tree, and that is the remedy to poison wood. And it's this flaky, very thin, paper thin bark that peels mm-hmm. off the gumbo limbo tree. It peels. You can just scrape it off and boil it, and use the 
use the water and as a poultice, you put it on the on your skin when you get when you scrape up on the poison wood. Like paper wood. We had paper trees and over the bar paper those are pausing trees. Those are the remedy to the poison. Oh, remedy to the poison. Yeah, oh, so they okay. the gumbo limbo you'll see everywhere because they leave those trees. They try to pull out the poison wood when they when they find it. In general, oh. but you see, you'll see those trees around just in the neighborhood, really, in the flaky skin like that. That's a remedy. Mm -hmm. That's a remedy for a, a, to a skin toxin from a tree. But there, it's all over nature like that. Nature, nature, within every malady that exists, that is natural. Its remedy mm -hmm. grows. Its remedy grows next to it. It's the same with disease. With with whatever natural disease that occurs within us its remedy also grows within us next to it mm. Mm. and we always say in chinese medicine if you want to know yourself you observe nature and then by observing nature you understand how you work within mm. yeah Chinese medicine is very much a medicine of ecology within the body. Yes, I I used to work with this with, with this Chinese girl. She was color young and just getting started in her nursing, and I met her on the job. And she didn't stay too far from me, so I was just swing by and pick up every morning. I did it to my job change because I was doing private work, so she was at my Sinai hospital. She was on staff every morning. I come. Pick her up. She'll have me a little lunch fix. She'll have her lunch fix. <laughs> Some of that stuff, I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was glad we didn't eat together. Sometimes we would eat together. And when we would eat together, I'd be hoping, no, just let it be something that I can really eat because she'd be fixing all kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she would tell me. It was good. She said, she, I want you to eat your lunch now because this is good for your body. You're working hard. So this is going to help you. She was probably making you all, you know, a bunch of natural foods. And That's what were... she would do. She'd she be cooking sometimes when she'd come get in that car. You could smell that food. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there's enough butter and salt in that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Fried there's Chicken. Well, there's <laughs> nothing in that for me. <laughs> I saw a really, I saw a really funny scene. I don't know if anybody ever watched the movie Nurse. I think it was called Nurse Betty. Yeah, Nurse Betty, the television show. But anyway, there was a scene where an elderly couple came in, and the man was very ill. He was going, he was very likely going to be dying in in the hospital within that day. And the wife came in with him, and Nurse Betty asks, you know, what are your wishes, and what would you like for us to do here? And and the wife said, I've made him some chicken noodle soup and he would like to have that so nurse betty is a little and a little bit cynical says to you know her attending nurse says let it be noted that the patient has denied care and has instead opted for chicken noodle soup it's kind of and it was kind of funny but it was kind of endearing and she sat with her husband and they they were in the care of the er but they weren't the but the 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 nurses weren't weren't to interfere with his decline and try to resuscitate or save him. And so she sat there and she fed him the chicken noodle soup that she had made with love and care. And he really, really, really loved it. And mm -hmm. he was very happy and it really seemed to relax him and put him at ease. And then he passed away. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, well-being is almost more important then in your instance, like the this woman was making very, probably very good, healthy food for you, but it didn't reach your well-being <laughs> right. at yeah. all. It just wasn't home to you. Yeah, it wasn't she told home to me you. that it was, she told me that it was good. It probably was, me. yeah. Yeah. I think well-being is important. Well-being is important, just as important as healthy living I think sometimes it's okay for you to reach for something that brings forward well-being. It lifts the spirit, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can eat really, really <coughs> healthy food and have a crap conversation over dinner 
And while you are consuming this really, really healthy food, you've just sprinkled a bunch of emotional and spiritual toxicity onto it for your seasoning. And you've eaten that with it. Mm -hmm. I don't think people realize the contradiction that they are living in their lives. And I hope people can reevaluate what they're doing. My niece is staying in Mobile, Alabama. She's a chef in a small nursing home. She said it's for like a senior citizen place. And she said she, when the first day she went in, went in and she cleaned the kitchen up and got it set up the way she wanted and everything. So the supervisor was and the owner was telling her, you whatever you need, let them know it. So she went and she got everything set up in the way she wanted it and rearranged everything. And said she cooked that meal. And she said, she said the people came from the table, everybody just sit up and nurse with them. And now they bring the patient down in this big room and everybody like eat together. So it's very nice. And she everybody was eating all the food and all the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the nurses and the, and then the supervisor and said, well, what happened today? Everybody <laughs> ate the food. <laughs> <laughs> so they had a bunch of cookies now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, my niece, you know, she, she had learned to cook the way we cook. <laughs> and so she took back to her job. Yeah, I wish more more people who are in, who love cooking or inspired to cook or want to cook would consider going and working in the hospital <laughs> yeah. and cooking and, and help and cooking for food. people, knowing that the, what you're doing is feeding people who... Who are in, yeah, a, in yeah, a scary place. She said the supervisor told her, I hope you never leave, so you got a job for life as long as you want to, so because my patients have never been this happy before. So they, and she said that they have the exercise room and, and activity, and mm -hmm. said when she finished cooking and cleaning the kitchen up, get everything cleaned up, so she go down and, and sit with them and exercise and help them exercise in the little activity room. And so she said she, one day, when she finished in the kitchen, she took her radio down there and she put the music on. Wow. <laughs> then all of them got up. Look at that. Some of them, and some of them on their walker dances and some standing behind their chair. And so the supervisor come in and asked about what's going on in here today? <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> and so she, and so she told her, so you know, there's some of these people been in here I like for some years and said they have not moved around and they was college. So I never seen all my patients be so happy. And said she's I'm so glad that you were here with us. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. That is amazing. Remember when I was telling you about that guy in Charleston who cooked the who cooked the poke bowl and you would eat his food and just feel yes. so alive. Uh -huh. And because of what he, it was because of him and what he put into his food and the same with you, what you how when you cook and you put into your food. And I guess apparently your niece has that that golden touch. You know, some people, they can really do a garden. They call them the green thumb. They've got a green thumb. I don't know what you call it. Mm -hmm. A chef that's got yeah. the yeah. magic <laughs> touch like that. But oh, my goodness, if there is anybody out there who can who can cook and praise and put that kind of energy into food, please go go work in a hospital if it's if it could be a good job for you and because when people do when they eat that food when they eat food that's alive like that it could change your whole outlook it's amazing food is medicine she said my niece said that whole place have changed since she's been there oh wow she's a healer removing blocks through food yeah that's amazing yeah it's amazing and she said people get up out of their chair and, and I said, Shama so is come walking around and, and, and so they for so the nurses and stuff, so they used to just sit and when they were in activity, they didn't try to do nothing. Yeah. No, yeah, because mm -hmm. they were, I, I don't think people realize the, the burden that food, the what they've eaten puts on their bodies, you know, like too much sugar or if you're always eating sugar, you're on a roller coaster because you're trying to chase that sugar level fix you've got to keep your sugar levels up Alcohol, mm -hmm. alcoholism does the same thing when your sugars drop alcohol is a lot of sugar so when your sugars drop you're craving again and you're chasing 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 to try to keep your levels up and sugar does the same thing a lot of carbohydrates do this a lot of bread and rice carbohydrates do the same thing 
Vegetables have carbs too, but it's a, it has a different mechanism for you. I don't think people realize that some, sometimes the way that they feel had the heaviness, the fatigue, the fading of energy in the day is because of what they, they're eating, what they're putting, what they're consuming in their body, they're consuming in their emotions, they're consuming in the stimulation around them. Yeah, I can feel good when I eat something. Yeah. It's, that is not right for me. I get lazy just giving. Yeah. You and you <laughs> know you know, you know it before you, you eat it. You just have to make yourself move. You you listen, you know it before you eat it, Lurleen. I know I do. I'm know well enough to know before I put something to my mouth what's gonna do to me. I'm fully aware of it. And I'm willing yeah. to accept the consequences of how I'm gonna feel after, which if I really just want to have it. But I am aware of it. You yes. are. I know you, you are know, aware of it. I know, and like, like when I the grits is one of the things. That <laughs> if I eat grits, I know I'm gonna be heavy. Yep. But I don't eat it often. Right, right. They of course. make you so lazy all day. You just mm-hmm. pulling yourself. Yeah. Trying to move, they just weight you down. No. I don't know what it is about them. It's pizza for me. But I don't know. It's oh, home. Yeah. It's home. Yeah, pizza for me too because that cheese and that pizza, I think that's what get me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's well being. It's well being. You're reaching mm-hmm. for well being, and you just, you know, it's all right. I'll just have this kind of a day because I did this. I have my joint pain today because I did that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my joints are aching. I had a little too much sugar. Like, your body, Ooh. your body tells you. Your body tells you. Just listen. Oh, 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 this is a funny story. Okay, so my mom had gotten a routine colonoscopy, and I was her, her person to, to drive her and pick her up. And I was in the recovery area with her, and we were just separated by curtains, so there's, you know, like 30 people recovering in this room. And there was a guy next to her, and he was complaining about the fact that he could no longer eat an entire pizza. <laughs> yeah. And he was arguing with the nurse. And because I guess he had horrible reflux going on. And, and maybe he was doing an endoscopy when he was there. But he had a horrible reflux going on. And just having some kind of GI issue. But he was like, what do you mean I can't? So, so what now? I can't have my, an entire pizza now? Like he was just having this argument, and I thought, "Oh my goodness, <laughs> Eve, sir, evolve, evolve. Your body will only tolerate so much, and then it's going to start talking to you by way of reflux or painful abdominal cramping or explosive diarrhea. I mean, these are the kinds yeah. of things where your body says, "Okay, I can't do this anymore. You've done this all our life." Yeah. Yeah, to go older, you really have to change your diet. You do. You have to change your diet around. You really do. You have to. You have to refine. You have you. You move into a more refined space, <laughs> where you can't just be willy nilly about what you're putting into your body. I think of yourself as a, as a finicky, a race thing. race car. A garbage disposer. <laughs> Oh, you know, my, uh, our son, when, when he would eat, he, he's a good foodie. He likes food, which is really nice. He's 11 now, but ever since he's been a, ever since he's been around on this earth, he's always, whenever he's experienced food that he just loves, he does this double clap after he eats, he'll take a bite and then just clap twice really fast and just lift his hands up in the air. <laughs> he's enjoying it being Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Just... It, it, people say this about your closet too. If you got a bunch of clothes in your closet you never wear, it's it's t- time to Marie Kondo that stuff. Like, don't if put it to your chest and say, does this bring me joy? And if it doesn't, get rid of it. And it's the same with food, and it's the same with people in your life, and it's the same with the stimulation you have around you. If you don't double clap after you put food into your mouth. And it's not contributing to your well-being and lifting you like people people wanting to dance and making you want to dance and sing and smile and laugh and turn around to somebody and give them a hug. Don't eat it. Don't, Don't eat it. 
That's what sometimes we get what happened. We just go to Craven and then we just see this stuff and just eat it. Yeah. Or just have a couple of bites. Do you have to eat the whole thing? Time, time to hit the bottom of your stomach. You just start. Then you'd be wondering, why did I do that? Yeah. Well, just just don't make it your habit. Make it make it your every now and again, but don't make it your every day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a little treat in once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, oh my goodness. I can only I can imagine what your days are like having to drag yourself out of bed. <laughs> up the hill to the job I mean that's a lot to to ask of yourself every day mm -hmm. every it is, day it's a lot. it doesn't take long to turn it around either your body reacts toot scoot to good food it'll tell you right away oh yeah we like this this is good keep it up keep it up keep it up <laughs> I'll help you if you help me that's the deal mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll care I'll carry you through this life with vigor, with energy, with endurance, with a good outlook. And then you can then you can enjoy the fruits of the spirit. Oh yeah. When the body is when the body is enjoying its fruits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you bring them together and you have a good you have a good life. Good life. Yeah. You have clarity, and then you're, you'll be untangled from blocks. You'll receive, you're, you'll receive the messaging, you'll receive the word, you'll receive the stream. You won't even have to work for it. It'll just be there. You'll just be feeling and, it, be in it. And then you can receive happiness, too. That brings on happiness and, and joy. And you can move around. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can move yeah. around. You can feel move around better. You can feel your youth again. Yeah. yeah. When you have you and like, you know me, when I be walking, I, I that just that's happening. It's just happy. You know, you're walking around, look at the stuff. Yeah. And, and you're feeling so like you're yourself. Walking, and people just, you know, passing to and from people passing. You yeah. meet each other and you mm. know, the bikers, they over on one side, and then the automobiles, they going by. You know, you just be out there, just a, yeah. just a morning of some, some everything happening. Yep, yep. It'd be like Chavez running out. Look at that. That's a car. It just went by. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, Lurleen, what a fun message has come through. Look, you can be in the stream through good food. I never, you know, I didn't think about that. Of course, I didn't think about that. But yeah, yeah, that's a way. That's a way in. The way in, yeah. Another thank you for this daily bread. <laughs> yes. Oh, you get it? And thank you for this daily bread. Yes. Oh, that you're funny. That's funny. Oh God, you're funny. Ha ha. <laughs> Oh, that's give funny. Give us this day our daily day, bread. Give us this and day our daily bread. See what I'm saying about the Lord's Prayer, y'all? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's funny. Yes. Yeah. Fell right in. And you know, I'm going. I'm going to visit our friend in the hospital. To, we're bringing her uh -huh. croissant. We're bringing her a latte. We're bringing her fresh berries. Okay. We're bringing her the word through food. Yeah. Yeah. Pray oh over my that goodness! Food before you give it to oh, you know I, you know I will. Yeah. Bring in the daily bread. Oh my goodness! How funny! Oh, I love this. This was really <laughs> funny. Oh, you funny God! Yeah. You a funny God too. Yeah, God. He, what humor? He lazy. Yeah. <laughs> God is good. God is great all the time. All the time. All the time. Well, it is about that time for us, Lurleen. About to that time. Let everybody yeah, move into their hope. space. You, God, with Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. which we thank you all the time. But you say, seek ye first your kingdom of God, and your righteousness and all things will be added unto it. And so, Father God, we come in this morning 
seeking your word and seeking your faith, seeking your love, and Father, most of all, peace mm-hmm. over our life and each and every one's life that are listening, all our families and lives, Father God, we just lift up this whole nation actually before you this morning because we all need you, Jesus, in different ways. Mm-hmm. And we just want to thank you for stretching those long arms out this morning and just protecting us with your hands of protection. Put that protection around us as we go to and from our destination this day. And we just want to thank you for mercy and grace. We thank you, Father God, for watching over us all night long, giving us this opportunity, another day of life, health, and strength. As we go through this day, Father, let us realize that we are not on our own, that you are the one that's in charge. You are the head, Mm -hmm. and Father God, and we just thank you for letting us listen to that quiet voice when you speak, Lord. You speak to us, and we thank you for letting us learn how to listen to the voice when we speak. Sometimes we can hear that voice. We don't understand what it is. That is you speaking to us. You're telling us what we should do. And Father, just let us just don't go out doing things that we shouldn't do and not saying, asking you for forgiveness. And we just want to thank you for forgiving us, being a forgiving God, a merciful Savior, and we just love you. And we thank you, Father God, as we go through this day, that we would bring peace and a little happiness and joy to someone's life. Yes. And just let us not learn just to walk by people. And most of all, Father, mm-hmm. we can tell because we have that desire of the Spirit, I do. And I know when people need a word, just something said, but just let us just don't walk by. Just let us just say something. Yes, yes. And we just Anything. thank you, Lord. Yes. For just teaching us in the way that we should go. Guide us with that eager eye. And we just want to thank you, Father God, for breaking every yoke, every stronghold to set up all down. Yes. This morning, Father God, let us start our lives Untangle like us. a new day, new Untangle opportunities, us. new peace, new joy, yes. new love, new respect for others. And most of all, Father, thanking you for this day and for carrying us through this day. Yes, sir. And showing us the way, Father. And we yes. just love you. We praise you. And we glorify your precious name. All these blessings. Thank you for in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you for Amen. this. Thank you for this fun message today. That we hear you through food, we hear you through song, we th- we hear you through the children's laughter, birds singing, the sun rising, cars going by, color we see in the world, movement. Yes. We see. We see. We see. We believe we and we see. And again, we see the beautiful clouds in the sky. I love mm-hmm. to look at the clouds and and find images yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you look at those clouds I can find little little um animals look like a dog or mm-hmm. you know sometimes you can see look like a image of a person you know I just look and just try to find something in the cloud to see see what I can find yep see yep. S- seeking and finding those things unblocks us inside and we untangle ourselves. So find the things that will untangle you and allow them to do so. Yes. And take this time, take this space. Lurleen loves to be unblocked through the clouds. That's fun. I love the idea of being unblocked through food. I love it. (laughs) And you know, I love the stars. And the the twinkle, twinkle of the stars. Twinkle, twinkle, you just look at those stars. You find your good, just find those good clear spot in the sky when it's dark. Yeah. You find your clouds, you find your stars, you stars, unlock yourself. Yes, yes. Untangle yourself. Mm-hmm. Take this time now, move into your place, and your connection. Enjoy it. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you. for another day. Oh. Yeah, we're just, just so grateful for all of life. Just be just grateful and, and just thankful, and you know that every acclaim gratefulness. This day, and then we choose an attitude of joy. That's right. Fruits of the Spirit. Yeah, the fruits of the Spirit. That's right. Every day. 
in the canvas, boots in the shoes.